What do you hold most personal to yourself? I'm not gonna like say his name, but. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm gonna say, but. Um, I don't know. We have not been given the space to talk about things outside of sport, whereas other people have, specifically men, can have entire shows where they literally talk about what kind of butts they like, they talk about the kind of women they like, they talk about the men that they hate by name. And women have not been given the space to be able to just speak. Now granted, we would not do any of those things, but it's the fact that we haven't had the place to even have the opportunity to do those things. I think the misconception about what women actually talk about, <laughs> particularly women who are in kind of the same spaces, who are in the workplace, who, have, who are dating, who are married, whatever, like we just have things going on. We aren't sitting around just talking about housewives, which sometimes we do, or our <laughs> nail color, which sometimes we do, but sometimes we're also talking about our childhood trauma, and sometimes we're talking about business, and sometimes we're talking about deep cultural things that influence how we feel about ourselves and the patriarchy. Anyone who is friends with me knows at some point in the dinner conversation, I'm going to bring up the fucking patriarchy. I'm just going to do it. It's good. We're going to get to a conversation about that because that's really who I am. And that there's not a space that I've had to express that part of things. But also, I think it's important that these are our group chat conversations. Like we are checking in with each other on real shit mm -hmm. and having elaborate, intense, poignant, intelligent, developed conversations there isn't something that for me allows that in the way that I want to do it. And yeah. I don't have a platform to do that. So that's, that was part of the reason why. The internet's made it seem like if you disagree with each other, you cannot even be in the same space with another person that has a disagreement. That, what? Like, when yeah, did that happen? That yeah. It's like, okay, you're on this side, I'm on this side. Like, never the two shall meet. That isn't, that's not in any way real life with any relationship or interaction that you have about anything. And if you go to the comments section, it's like, fuck you, go die. Like, huh? Yeah. But social media in a lot of ways has kind of ruined common thought, largely because it isn't the real common thought. It's just what we're talking about online. And it's important for us to have conversations that have context and nuance yeah. and personal experiences and disagreements, but it's an exchange of thought. And conversations don't have to be about picking a side. You yes. just have to be about hearing a side. And I really like that this show will be about us hearing one another. I hope people walk away from the show feeling like they are not alone and not like in a dramatic way, but just in a way of like, I have realized that a lot of times our stories that we feel are singular or unique to us are like everyone's story. And really being a woman is like a very shared experience. Yeah. And I want women specifically to hear the show and feel seen and heard. I want people to feel like they just watched a real conversation and not an argument in the comment section. Mm -hmm. Even though we disagree. Right. Yeah. Like this is how we see this conversation. This is how we have this conversation. This is how two people who genuinely talk constantly and know a lot about each other learn more about each other. This is a human experience. Just because we adamantly disagree, disagree about a topic does not mean we're going to stop being friends or even see or view each other differently. Like a real conversation has nuance, has levels. And I enjoy listening to two people talk about things they're passionate about, even if I disagree with them because they're able to articulate what they're saying without screaming at each other or name calling or being like, okay, you, you, you believe that? Okay, you're out of my life. It's not how we talk to each other. Yeah. I think what makes Taylor and I unique is that we are at our training level journalists. And that training, if you will, is something that used to be what puts you in a space to have a microphone. And I don't think I'm, anyone should have to have that. That's my perspective when I'm talking about anything is just what I'm saying. I 
like knowing that what I'm saying has been properly researched before, yeah. before I ever get to my opinion, because that's what I already do every day. And that is how I apply myself to everything else in life. I will be somebody that says, I actually do think a lot of media that's out there and a lot of shows, a lot of, you know, podcast style pieces of content are very dangerous. I think that they are. I think that it has influenced how we talk about women. It has influenced how we talk about men. It has influenced how we decide how we feel that day. Like common thought is very, very, very important. And social media and certain shows have made topics feel like they are black and white. And I think the reason that we are very equipped for this space is because we understand that actually everything is gray. And I want our show to contribute more to understanding because I do believe that it would be better everywhere if we understood how to talk to one another. I'm not gonna like say his name, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm gonna say. But um, like, you do you mean like? Ask the okay. What do I hold most personal to myself? I don't know. I'm very private, and so I I'm super selective about who I let in any kind of intimate space. But I think the thing I'm most private about is affection. I am not an affectionate person yeah. in public, but in private, I am a mushy little dough ball. <laughs> but nobody gets that. Like, that's so personal to me. Um, and obviously, I'm speaking mostly to relationships, but it's also friendships. Like, I don't allow everybody into the, the intimate space. So I think that's what is most personal. For me, I mean... Generally, I hold my life very personal to me because like with what we do, you feel like there is always this audience and they're also always wanting to learn more and more about you. And the more that you give them, the more they will take from you. Yeah. And I never want my life to feel like entertainment. And I especially don't want the thing I love the most and the person I love the most to feel like it's entertainment to somebody else. So I very intentionally hold that close to my heart because it is the most important thing that is in my life. Um, and I don't really envision that changing, that I would ever want it to be more public, but I certainly feel more empowered to discuss the ways that I have been personally kind of transformed by being in love, but it's still very personal to me. of fun we like really got into it we did we got we got a little personal maybe too personal now that too personal that could be a show name too like t-w-o because there's you and there's me you do love an entendre i love an entendre <laughs> too personal what are you doing in march getting too personal let's do this again <laughs>